Okay, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, my name is Gabriel Brent, and I'm very happy to have Michelle Hurlbutt of Traders Breakthrough here today. Uh, she is uh, my trading coach, and uh, I'm sure several of you have also talked to her in the past. So uh, we, uh, we hope today will be uh, very enlightening upon uh, the emotional side of trading and all the mental aspects involved in such. So without further ado, here is Michelle. Hi, good morning, Gabriel and everyone. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. Um, do you ever wonder why people say this time, or you say this time it'll be different and you keep getting the same results? Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not all your fault. The emotional side of our trading gets in the way. Our emotions get in the way of trading, whether we like it or not. My name is Michelle Hurlbut. I am a physician assistant. I was in trauma surgery for 11 years. I'm also a forex and futures trader. Right now, mainly, I concentrate on the futures side of it. Uh, I have master level certifi certification in neurolinguistics programming, timeline dynamics, hypnosis, emotional freedom technique, and success coaching. This is all the stuff, this is the main stuff that I use to help other traders realize their goals and dreams. I myself have been trading since, um, since 2008. I started at the end of 2008 in Forex and I, like a lot of other people that I see, struggled tremendously back and forth, win, lose, in sim mode, out of sim mode and into live mode, win, lose, in sim mode, out of sim mode. You know the, the whole routine. And I spent a lot of time searching for what was causing all of these things. I, I would get into a trade and I, I'd get upset. Uh, I'd get nervous, I'd get out of my trade soon, um, I'd get into a good trade and I'd be elated and I'd want to put my stop, my excuse me, my target out farther to get more of it, only to have it maybe come back against me. Sometimes, sure, I'd get a good trade and, and all would be good. And when I got those good trades, of course, I was jumping up and down. The range of emotions was just amazing. Um, and all these emotions, just they kept affecting me, they kept affecting my trading, I noticed that they kept affecting all kinds of other people. And I happened to fall upon this different mode of help that, that I found intriguing and that once I had gone through it all, helped my trading out tremendous, tremendously, along with my life. Um, more emotional in other aspects of our life. It just seems that in trading it's a little bit more enlarged um, and it's a little bit more back and forth and volatile, just like the markets are, right? The markets are volatile, well our emotions tend to be volatile just like the markets are. Um, and so upon receiving these certifications and going through the training program, every program I decided to help others. Since it had helped me so much, I decided to help others. And that's what I do. Along with the trading, the other aspect is coaching people into good trading plans and then coaching them next into getting rid of the emotions with their trading plans. Um, so we have a belief system. And the the definition of a belief is something believed especially, uh, a tenant or a body of tenants held by a group, or conviction of the truth of some statement or reality. It is a conviction beyond our reason. We don't know, we have no specific reason for that belief most of the time, but we believe it without doubt. And we place our trust in it, we place our confidence in it. So. I'd like you to think of what some of your beliefs are and how they affect your life. So why did I give you the definition of beliefs? Well, our beliefs turn into our thoughts, which turn into our emotions, which affect a chemical response, 
which works on our thoughts and beliefs, which works on our emotions, which increases the chemical response. So it turns into a vicious cycle. Our beliefs become our emotions, become a chemical response in our body. We might start getting sweaty palms. We might start doubting ourselves. We might start getting overly excited over, over a little thing. All different ways that does, that these affect us. And because these emotions and these beliefs we have about ourselves and how things should work affect us, they also affect our trading. In our life, we can a lot of times influence a little bit the outcome of things. We can influence this outcome based on how we approach a particular maybe person or situation. We can influence it by our tone of voice. We can influence it by an action. There are a lot of things we can do in a regular workplace or a regular environment where we're interacting with people that we can use about us that we've learned to influence an outcome that's more hopefully in our favor. In the trading markets, we cannot influence anything. We can't will a, a market to go in our favor. We can't throw a whole bunch of more positions at it in order to make it go in our favor. Um, the market is going to do what the market is going to do, and we cannot affect that. And that goes against a lot of our upbringing. As we're children, we're, we're trained through actions and through reactions to adjust our responses, adjust our attitudes, adjust um, what we're doing in order to get the outcome that we want from, say, our parents. Say we're little kids and we want something from our parents. Well, what do we do? A lot of times we'll start with crying and screaming or kids will start with, um, going to one parent and when one parent doesn't give us what, I, what they want, um, we go to the other parent. So these are all ways that we've learned through time to deal with things. And when it comes to our trading market, we can't do anything like that. And so we get stuck in this way of dealing with the market that is ineffective. It's effective for our regular lives, but it's not effective for our market lives. And so we need to go about changing that. And how do we change that? We change that through neurolinguistics programming, through changing our beliefs about the market, through changing our beliefs about ourselves, and maybe some of the things that we have, like decision-making beliefs or beliefs about money. Um, so I have a trader. His name is John, and he's been trading for five years. He's doing well. You know, he's making, at this point in time, he's making 2% on his capital a week. He'd like to increase that. He'd like to increase it just another 0.5%, not a big deal. Um, but he's having a lot of trouble adding another contract to that. So John ended up having a belief about having about what his worth was, what his value in, in life or his value money-wise was. And because this belief value system put a, a glass ceiling on himself without him even knowing it, every time he went to go hit that glass ceiling, he would get a subconscious reaction. And that subconscious reaction would cause him to sabotage himself. We are very much run by our subconscious selves. We have the conscious mind and we have the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is tasked with the job of keeping us alive and keeping us safe. Safe from all harm. How it keeps us alive is it keeps our hearts beating so that we don't have to think about it. It keeps us breathing so that we don't have to think about it. 
all these things it has to do, and it does it very well in the background so that we don't have to pay attention. Could you imagine having to remember to breathe and then talk at the same time and have any other thoughts about what's going on? Imagine having to think about breathing and driving. It's too much for our conscious brain to handle it. It's just too much going on. There's too many things happening. So our subconscious has learned how to do all that stuff. It's more, a lot of it's programmed uh, from birth, and some of it's not for programmed from birth. Some of it's programmed after birth. It's programmed through dealing in our dealings with our family members and our peers. And some of those subconscious dealings and some of those subconscious beliefs turn into our values, what we think we're worth, either money-wise or success-wise or our belief on our ability to make decisions correctly or incorrectly. Um, you might hear a, a parent telling a child at some point in time that they're stupid. Saying that to a child, especially if it's said often, can make a, an, a child grow into an adult that believes that they're stupid, that they can't make uh, correct decisions outside of their realm of comfort. And so every time they go outside of their realm of comfort, their subconscious wants to keep them safe from making a bad mistake, and so it sabotages them to put, it, put them back in their realm of comfort. It's comfortable there. It's safe there. And we all want to be safe. Our bodies, our subconscious wants us to be safe. It wants us to live a very long time and to not have harm, to not have emotional harm, not have physical harm. So on working on John's thoughts about his worth and his value, and it's, it's interesting how such a small event as a football game, John's event was a football game when he was about six years old, that for some reason, he felt he wasn't worth because the little the big boys let him play, but they didn't let him play the the position he wanted. They 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 had him play another position, and he didn't for some reason think that position was as important as the position he wanted. And so he formed an opinion about himself that he was only worth so much, and every time he tried to go above that he would sabotage. It would put, his subconscious would put him back into a position of comfort. Working with him in a very short amount of time, he was able to reframe that belief about himself and realize that he had huge worth because the big boys actually let him play at all. And they put him in a position of great value. He was a quarterback. Sure, he only got to throw the ball once or hand it off once, but he was quarterback. And just changing this small belief that he didn't realize and had no idea would even affect him at all, he was able to go to trading almost 3% in a week. And he'd broken through his barriers and surpassed his original goals. And now he could move on and keep going up from there. It's the small things that happen. It's just, you know, it's amazing, and we don't always realize it. And we, we keep wanting to do the same thing and keep saying, I, I can force myself through it. Understand that it's your subconscious that you're needing to deal with and not your conscious person. Your conscious person can will you to do a lot of things, like not eat that piece of chocolate cake. But when it's sitting there in front of you, guess what happens? All of a sudden the fork's in the hand and the cake's in the mouth. It's funny how that happens. So Amy, she recently graduated from training school, and she's taken, like me, a few a few years ago, had taken some trades in her live account and some in her sim account. She'd lost half of her live account, and she's frustrated because she likes trading a lot, but she's not seeing the results she needs, obviously. So with working with her, and with understanding that thoughts and beliefs become your emotions, become your chemical responses, your aversion, like touching a hot stove, you recoil immediately. 
we worked with her on some of her things. We got her a good trading plan. Um, together we worked on the best trading plan for her. And after that, now with her solid trading plan, she has a weekly goal that she's consistently making in her live account. It's not huge, but it's a goal that she's making. And it's accumulating on a weekly basis. She's seeing her account come back to life. And now she's really excited about trading. Because now she's seeing a possibility for making a living with it. So each person, all of us, we have forks in the roads all the time. We have different futures for ourselves. Each future is a good future. You just have to decide which future is the one you want. Which path do you want to take? And take that path. And if you need help to get to that path, then you reach out and you get the help that you need. So my question all to you is, what future, what path do you want? So I hope you've all thought of a path that you want and thought about how can I get there? What are the things keeping me on that path, keeping me blocked from that path? And what can we do to help you on that path? So I'd like to take this time to open up to any questions. Um, I think the chat box is best for the questions. So if anybody has questions that they'd like me to answer or a discussion topic that you would like me to talk about, I would uh, invite you now to write something in the chat box. And let's see where we can go from there. Maybe somebody has an issue that they've kind of been dealing with that they'd like to know more about. Well, while I give people time, to write something or think of something. Here's a little exercise I'd like you guys to, to think about doing. So this is how the part of how the mind works in, in neurolinguistics programming. So it's a memorization exercise. Our brains store things in different sections of our brain depending upon where we see it. So if there is something that you really want to memorize, Let's say you have the perfect trade set up and you have a picture of it. You have a picture of that perfect trade set up and you want to memorize that perfect trade set up. I want you to take a piece of paper and print out that perfect trade set up or print out your trade plan or whatever it is that you want to memorize. And then I want you to take that sheet of paper, hold it in your left hand so that you can see it, and I want you to put it slightly in front of you, say maybe 14 inches in front of you, and then up to the left. So it's directly over your left shoulder, and as you're facing straight on, you need to look out of it slightly out of the left corners of your eyes. So it's up and to the left. Not too far to where you can't see it and so that it's out of focus, but far enough so that your eyes need to move up and to the left slightly in order to see it. And you read that to yourself or, or you stare at it for a little while to yourself. And then you take it away and you recite what it is on there that you need to look for. Let's say it's an apposome and you see two charts. You have 
your 15 minute chart and your 5 minute chart. And you want to know that your zones are confluent and your maybe near a pivot area or or there's something else in there that keys you in uh, a candlestick pattern each person has a different trading plan and so for me to actually say something specific is is a little difficult but I think you're understanding what I'm talking about you memorize that you memorize each portion of that setup and you see that picture in your mind. You take that piece of paper away and you try and picture it exactly how it is up in the left hand corner of your brain. So you can kind of you can close your eyes if that helps and see if you can recreate that picture right there. And as you do that, you keep doing it. You keep doing it until all of a sudden you take that paper away and let's say you close your eyes and you can see it exactly exactly how it is on the picture. Perfectly clear exactly how it is. Now you can take that and you know if something comes close to your setup close your eyes, you look in the upper left hand corner a little bit and if that picture matches the picture on your screen that's your setup and you take it. So I'd like you to go away from this little thing with that memorization exercise, that little technique that you can use to increase your ability to see your setup while it's happening and know that that's the right thing to do. I don't know if any of you are divers, but so far um, I don't have any questions yet. Uh, I guess you're all yeah, perfect. Actually, actually, we do have a couple of oh. different topics. Um, Good. I we guess have, I can't see the questions. Uh, apparently not. Uh, we have uh, impulse control. John would like to know more about impulse control as kind of a topic, so to speak, if you could dive into that a little bit. Sure, impulse control. Um, impulse can Im, an impulse comes from us feeling like we're missing out on something. Um, whether it be uh, our trade, or whether it be getting into you know the car, or whether it be talking to a, a going to the latest party. An impulse is from from a uh, comes from a space of lack lack of so you're feeling like you're lacking and you need to get this thing right away otherwise you're gonna lack um, and controlling those impulses needs to happen from the space of what causes that feeling of lack and once that feeling of lack has been identified and taken away through you know re reforming that program in your brain um, then that impulse doesn't show up anymore but impulses generally come from a feeling of lack you have a lack of um, a lack of maybe you haven't taken enough trades or maybe you haven't taken any trades and so you're feeling like you're missing everything Controlling that impulse uh, comes with reprogramming that particular reason for that in your brain. And that's part of what I do with the neurolinguistics programming and the timeline dynamics. We go in there and um, the two of us dis discover what is going on and what's causing all of this. And then we, we give it a new program that works. Um, our subconscious runs on automatic programs just like a computer does. And it's funny to equate us to computers, but that's that's really why we've designed computers is we've designed computers and they've grown up and grown up and grown up to be more like us 
to make decisions, to do all these tasks that we do. Um, and so it's, it's understandable that they would create it like our brain. So it has tasks, our brain has tasks that it does automatically. It says when I get up in the morning I have to put one foot in front of the other in order to get out of bed. We don't think about it, it just does it. Um, and so it, it also says I've got to brush my teeth. It also says well when I'm driving I need to make sure that I see all that's going on and that I stop at red lights. Most of the time we don't pay attention as consciously as we think we are to driving. Um, and it's because our subconscious has taken over the automatic movements of driving and of keeping us safe. So impulses come from a lack of something that's going on in there. And deciding and figuring out what that little program is and readjusting that program helps alleviate that impulse. I hope that answered it well for everyone. Uh, I, I think it was good. Um, we have another question here. I find that many traders have trouble shifting from trading in a SIM account to accepting the risks and realities of trading with real money. I've been trading for almost 10 years and still have days where I just don't like um, where I just don't like the risk of trading real money. So what would you have to say about that? There are some days when we just don't want to go to work. Um, and there's, I don't think personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Our brains, uh, trading, trading is highly um, specific, it's very concentrated, and it's very intense. Even without emotions, it's still all of these things. You add emotions into it, even if we're keeping them at bay and they're not really affecting us too much, you know, we've, we've learned how to put them in, in perspective. We know about our, um, our trade plan and we trust it extremely well. Um, it just, that, all of that just still makes trading a bit intense. And after a long period of time of intensity, sometimes our brains and our bodies and our emotions just need a rest. And if your brain and your body is telling you that, and if you find that on those days you don't trade as well as you do on all the other days where you feel better, my advice would be to, you know what, give yourself a break and give yourself a rest. And it's okay. Just rather than even trading sim, just go back to bed or go out and enjoy the outdoors, putter in the garden, um, go for a, a ride, whatever you need to give yourself that release that your body is, your body and mind are asking for. That's the other thing about trading is sometimes we just need to listen to our bodies and make and our minds and respect them for what they're telling us. Because you may not feel like you're not feeling so well, except for the fact that you're kind of having this I don't feel like trading live today thing. But sometimes our, our subconscious knows that there's something amiss. And if it trades today, it won't be as successful as it normally would. Or it will take three times as much energy to be as successful as it normally is on less energy. And so it's just asking for a break for that day. If they happen often, then, then that's a completely different issue. But if it's only, you know, once in a while, your brain just needs a rest, in my opinion. Now, if I were to delve into it, you know, deeper with, with you specifically, that might be not the case. But that's what I'm thinking off the top of my head. That's, that's really good. Um, rest and realizing how much our brain actually works in all of this is 
sometimes an underestimate by far, you know. So, um, but yeah, I think we all do. We all think that we should be on the best every day, and that's just not the case. We are not. Mm-hmm. It's and definitely different if, than going to a day job, you know, so to speak. It is. And uh, where you don't have to like, it, I just notice myself. It's just a lot of concentration, you know, and, and pretty deep focus concentration. Um, even when you try to trade like a robot, you know, it, it, it takes that, it, it's just hard. <laughs> it takes yeah. that focus because you're literally making a decision every minute. Literally every minute, if not more often, depending upon what kind of charts you use. Yeah. Here's a, another question. Um, what are the most common reasons for tr traders staying in the marginal plus minus levels for years? Should SIM trading be used until SIM account doubles? It is my recommendation that SIM account should be traded as if a live account. So let's say you start with $5,000 in your live account. That's what you're going to start with. I'm just pulling that number out of a hat. That you should trade in SIM until you have doubled that and you are positive that your trade plan is working for you. A lot of us, a lot of people can trade for a long period of time but not have a written down solid this is my setup trade plan and if you don't have that no matter how long you've been trading then you're just flying by the seat of your pants most of the time and over time yes you get more experience and your subconscious learns a bunch of stuff and you consciously learn a bunch of things but you still don't know your probabilities of success and failure and you're still unsure of a few things and so that level of unsurety creates you to sometimes take trades in live sometimes take trades in sim uh, you know back and forth over that I, I call it broke even in your accounts yeah, you know, some days you're you're some sometimes you're doing okay, other times you're not doing okay, and and basically you stay at ground zero most of the time. So until you can get that actual setup in writing and a picture of it to where you understand it, you're gonna stay broke even, no matter how long you've been trading. That is. A very, <laughs> it's very wise. <laughs> it's very, very wise. I agree with that one. Um, we have another question here. Um, we actually have a few, just so you know. Uh, in a SIM account, in the back of the mind, the trader knows nothing bad can happen. In a live account, not knowing for certain where the market will go precedes the fear of being exposed to risk. Um, how do you handle that? There are two different ways to, that, that I personally uh, work with people on that. Um, one of them is do they have a trade plan and do they trust it? And how long have they traded that trade plan? If they're in those stages where they don't have any of that, then they need to have that trade plan and, and you'll hear me harp on this a lot the trade plan the trade plan the setup <laughs> gotta have it without it you're nowhere um, so if they don't have that set up and they don't have that comfort level then I work with them to get there until you get there trading live money you're gonna second guess yourself constantly now, if you already have your trade plan and you already proven it and you're having that trouble actually trading it, then that's a subconscious emotional issue that needs to be addressed on the uh, extended level. And that's where we get into the neurolinguistics 
and all of that kind of stuff and find out, okay, why? You know it works, so what is it that's stopping you? Is it the fear of failure? Is it the uh, you know fear of making a correct decision? Is it money issues that, that you have a, a fear of losing money? Um, you know, these are these are very strongly ingrained beliefs in people um, as they're growing up because you hear your parents all the time talking about money, they're talking about right and wrong, all these things. And how our subconscious stores it affects us in many different ways. So it kind of those those are the two ways that I can think of off the top of my head, the two most common ways to uh, deal with that. That's uh, that's really good. You know, I, I like that a lot. Um, it, it really is. You, you know, you go after the same setup time in and time out again. Um, and uh, you know, like real recently, my setups haven't been working as as I would like them to work all the time. Like I, I like to use time in in my setups, and they're in, something's just slightly off tilt about the market, so doesn't always line up just right with uh, the time of day that I'm really looking for, you know. So um, I would say that uh, it, it's a it's an ever evolving type of thing too, you know. Exactly. Um, so and you, if you hadn't had the that. patience to do all your uh, your evaluations ahead of time and things like that, then on days when you're because we all have them. There are days when the market doesn't do what it's going to do. That's why they call them probabilities. Hmm. We know that our trade plans, our setups, are not going to be correct 100% of the time. Without the education and the backward statistics or, or the knowledge, we aren't sure of how long that's going to happen. I mean, is this a one-time thing, a two-time thing? Or we're not sure that our trade plans are ever going to work again. Whereas when you've done all that, back testing, so to speak, and everything like that, and the market replay, and all those things, the simulation account, you get the confidence to know that there are times when our, the markets are just not giving us the setups, or they're not doing uh, justice to our setups, but that there will be a time again in the future soon where our setups will work perfectly again. And I just have to wait through this little drawdown and then it'll all go back to normal again, just like it has before. And we can't be right 100% of the time. Yeah, and it really is a, a huge probability game. And to maybe to some people's um, unliking this comment, but we, we don't even have an idea whether or not or when we're getting into a, a trade whether it's going to be a range trade or a, a trend trade you know you, you may have be looking for that breakout and you finally get that breakout but then it goes into another range you know and mm -hmm. it, like to, to see that kind of stuff happen or or maybe you're on the wrong side of a micro channel and it just slams you and slams you you know like uh, I've seen that stuff happen before too um, you know, I've been on the wrong side of a micro channel, and it, it just slams and slams and slams. You know, um, e even though we can read support and resistance very well, you know, um, we don't know what's going to happen in in the future, and uh, that's why I really like the idea of of uh, it taking a quick scalp for your first target. You know, uh, try to read what the market can give you realistically. Um, so that we can pay for our trade right away and, and get into um, hopefully a nice trend trade. But uh, um, like many of you guys uh, probably saw a trade that I posted in the Skype room early today when I was taking it, uh, you know, and looking at uh, the different levels in CL and, and the short move. Well, that move worked out really, really well, um, but it doesn't always, you know. We don't always get the real nice uh, reversal there, and it could have easily come back on us and, and pushed even higher, you know. So, uh, but once I get target one out of the way, man, it just it makes me feel a whole lot better, you know. Um, but then there's some days when target one seems like a million miles away too. So it's 
it's a uh, it's a challenging thing. I think trading can be simple, but uh, it seems like it's always going to be hard. Or at least that's been my experience. Um, so anyway, uh, we have a couple more questions here. Um, do they make a computer that yells back? Just kidding. Maybe <laughs> that would be <laughs> beneficial. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, I don't no, think No, but there's do. the easy button. Oh, yes. <laughs> there you go. You could do that. I literally, as you can tell, have that on my desk. When I make my correct trade, even if it doesn't work out for me, because I have to condition myself for the the fact that not all of them are cor are are going to work out, but at least I made the correct decision for my entry. You, that that's about conditioning yourself also to be able to accept the uh, correct decision, but the wrong outcome. Mm -hmm. So you know you can you can you can get the easy button from Staples if if you do it. Now, you don't push it, however, if you make a wrong entry against your trade plan, mm -hmm. whether it works for you or not. So um, all about the probabilities, we're only talking like 60 or 7% positive, you know, positive trades. So that means, let's say, 30%. So if you take 10 trades in a day, three of them, or four of them are going to be losers. So right. if you can put that into perspective, that losing is part of the business of trading, and understand that if you were in a, um, so as traders, we're self-employed individuals. We run our own business. Trading is our business. Whether we have a corporation or a company or anything, doesn't matter. It's still our business. If we were to run any other type of business and it was our business, we would have to spend money to advertise. We would have to spend money on um, accounting software. We would have to spend money on you know, marketing or employees or you know buying office equipment. You know, who knows what? So just like any other business, we have to spend money. So our version of spending money in our business is taking all the trades that meet our setup and understanding some of them are going to cost us money. And that cost of the money is just like paying for marketing. We had to spend money in a business to pay for our marketing and our advertising and whatever else we pay for in our business. It's the same thing in trading. It's just a cost of doing business. And the sooner we get comfortable with that and understand that it's a cost of doing business and not a right or wrong decision, the um, sooner life gets a little better. I, I, I really like that analysis and that, uh, that simile, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's really good. Um, I, we had one other question here. Uh, what do you think about hypnosis treatments? Hypnosis treatments in the right hands is great. I do a bit of hypnosis. I I compare I combine it with other things, but I do do hypnosis in my treatments for the emotional issues that go on that we need to get rid of. Um, so hypnosis in, in the right with the right person is great. Understand that we all do our own versions of hypnosis every day. Have you ever seen yourself zone out in front of the TV and can't remember what just happened? That's a form of self-hypnosis. Or driving down the street and it's the same route you take constantly and all of a sudden your mind starts thinking about something and next thing you know you're there and you're wondering how you got there. That's a form of hypnosis also. So hypnosis can be a, a really good thing for getting rid of emotional stuff. You just have to um, make sure that the person understands what, what's going on. And you can do self-hypnosis too. There are plenty of tapes out there and stuff like that. It's just not as specific. When you don't do it through someone who is specifically gearing it towards you, um, 
it's a little more general. All those tapes are a little bit more general. And they may not treat your specific issue. Yeah, and I, I have a little bit of experience just because we've done this before together. Um, mm -hmm. and, and just so you guys understand what the hypnosis was used for was um, I did not want to move my stops prematurely uh, for my style of trading and, and everything like that. Um, uh, I don't want to move to break even uh, plus whatever, you know, like as soon as my T1 gets hit, you know, and I was, uh, you know, looking at the the uh, fear and greed of the trade, you know, I'd be, I would hit the T1 and I'd be feeling all good. And, you know, you want to lock in those profits um, but from other statistical analysis and strategy building that I've done, uh, it says that moving your stops is actually very detrimental to your trade. Um, so uh, I, in the attempts to trade more um, like the, the machines and the automation, um, I went to Michelle and asked her if she could uh, help me with that. So we sat down and um, over Skype, um, we did the whole exercise together, uh, and it was it was a very relaxing exercise, and you get really really sleepy uh, and like drowsy uh, after the session. But uh, it it definitely did take. You know, I I don't have that anxiety about moving my stops, and I just I keep my stop where I I believe it should be, and uh, and then trade accordingly to my rules uh, as things pan out. Um, and a, and a kind of a case in point of, of something like that today, um, you know, it really did work out to to my benefit that I didn't move my stops until um, my trade plan tells me to move my stop down, you know, or to lock in profit, uh, because it, it it can be very hard to grab the really big moves. Uh, like I trade crude and so you can get dollar moves pretty easily on crude. But uh, when you move your stops around quite a bit, you can you can really go home with uh, a whole lot less than what was in the move, you know. Um, and sometimes a dollar move is, is nothing for crude, you know, like it does a few dollars in a day. So uh, just being okay with uh, getting that first target was, was a big deal for me. And and, uh, and being set up that way. Now, um, when I sat down in the hypnosis session, um, uh, it, was, it was just really relaxing, you know, like we went through the relax your body, relax your mind, you know, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, and it was really a no pressure type of, uh, of an application, so to speak. So um, it, it feels almost like you've had a... a a good nap almost. Uh, it, it's kind of funny. I think, I don't know how long the, the session actually, how long was actually like under hypnosis, Michelle? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, um, probably no more than 30 minutes. Yeah. So it, it, it didn't take that long, but it was just a very relaxing feeling, you know. Um, and I, I definitely can say that uh, it's stuck, you know. Um, and it, it has made me more comfortable with when I put on a trade. I'm either going to, I, I just accept the outcome, you know, either I was right or I was wrong. And uh, and that was probably the biggest part of that hypnosis session was that feeling of you put on a trade and either you're going to be right or wrong. Um, and either way, you, you know, you've done your best. Um, and then you just let, let the cards land where they may, so to speak. Um, so that was my experience. And I don't know if that, helps you at all in, in, in answering that question, but, uh, yeah. Now, Gabe says right or wrong. I like to say you've done your best to find your setup and put it on. You know that's your setup. You take that trade. It's just whether the markets like it or not. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we weren't right or wrong. We were right by finding our setup and putting it on. No, right. Excuse me. It's just if everybody else wants now to play your game. Yes, <laughs> exactly. If the markets are going to cooperate with it. Yeah. This might be one of those 30% where the market doesn't cooperate, and that's okay. But you were right in putting, in putting on your setup. <laughs> so 
You're always right. It's just whether the markets agree that that's the way they want to go also. And there is always two ways to look at a, a trade setup is what I've, well, I'm sure what everybody here has found. Uh, most of the people here uh, have five years of experience or more, you know, so you guys have all watched the charts a long time. Um, and uh, there's always two ways to look at a trade, you know, uh, long or short. And um, that is the analysis that uh, that gets us, you know. Um, and uh, there's so many times when you can make a case for either or so well, you know. Uh, a few cases, like when the reversals happen, that I feel like it's it's more of a, um, a one-sided type of e equation where you know that you're in the extremes of price action, but so much throughout the day you're just kind of in the middle, you know. Um, are you really on an extreme or, or not so much? But uh, it is uh, it is very challenging, you know, and... Um, well, on the other side is, is in order to take your trade in one direction, somebody else has to want to take the trade in another direction. Mm -hmm. that, that's just the facts. Right. right. So based on those facts, that's why you give yourself an edge with your trade plan and knowing the statistics of your trade plan and its success rate. Because mm -hmm. it's a fact. In order for you to be able to make your trade, somebody else has to want to take the opposite side. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's just playing the percentages. You know, like I know that my first target gets hit a certain percentage, second target gets hit another percentage, the third target hit gets hit, you know, the least. But uh, I'm just playing the percentages all the time, playing the percentages. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, that's that's really all it is, is you're just playing the percentages. Make sure your risk is, is correct, you know, and in and, and check but it's just a percentage play. Now, the risk can vary from trade to trade. I, I know quite a bit, but um, uh, it, it, you just got to let it flow, so to speak. So, um, Here's a question for you. Uh, do you. How do you handle clients that live in a different state? Um, well, as Gay mentioned a little bit ago, we did our stuff over Skype. So I do a lot of Skyping. Um, if it's a uh, hypnosis or neurolinguistics technique that needs to be done, then a lot of times we'll do it over Skype video. Um, other than that, it's it's just uh, usually Skype verbally. Um, if it's any kind of coaching and that kind of stuff. So I've left on, on the screen now is my contact information. And uh, what I haven't put in, and I should pro and I can do that so that you guys can reach me, is my Skype. Uh, that's my Skype uh, acronym, avatar, whatever. I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> and that's <laughs> down in our, our little chat window there. If yeah, you guys my are little Skype contact. Um, so you can you can always uh, add me to your contacts list that way too. And that's how I work. And I have, uh, in fact, all of my people are are that way. I don't see anyone in in an office anymore. I just do it all by Skype, and and have great have had great success with it. The other nice thing about doing it over Skype is, you know, um, I feel quite comfortable in my office. You know, so uh, mm -hmm. it's a uh, a safe environment to do all this stuff in. Exactly. All right, I'm not seeing a whole lot more questions there. Do you have anything else, mm -hmm. Michelle, that you'd like to cover? No, it's about the end of our of our little thing here, so it's probably time to let people go on and do stuff. Oh, sorry, the dogs are going to be barking. I have five dogs next door that uh, when the fire department comes out, the dogs tend to howl, so I'm going to mute myself real quick here and let Gabe take it from here. All right. Well, thanks so much, Michelle, for joining us. Um, I don't know if anybody uh, else has uh, any questions for me, um, but you're more than welcome to ask them now. Uh, and yes, the webinar has been recorded, and we will be posting it on the uh, Appazones website under the members areas, um, more than likely in the how-to section.
So uh, that if you guys want to refer back to this webinar at a later time, uh, more than welcome to. And uh, you know, I'm really trying to create a uh, community um, where we can hopefully uh, share and learn from from one another. Because uh, training's not easy. You know, um, going through a, a little rough patch myself right here for the past few weeks. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it's you have the the good days and the bad days um but uh you know all in all it's a uh, it's a process you know and it's a journey you know we're not focusing on on um uh, you know making multi millions we're just focusing on one day at a time you know and so i hope that uh we can really help each other out and uh um hopefully by me being a little transparent here as far as you know having good days and bad days, uh, you guys can uh, feel open to share as well. And uh, we can really just make this a, a better uh, community for everybody to learn from. So uh, I, I, my idea is to master the markets, but uh, I don't know if I will ever truly do so. And uh, 